Terrence Terry's dad was locked up when he was only four years old. This meant Terrence was now the man of the house and forced to grow up way too fast. He was determined to have a better future than his father, but that all changed when his dad came home and began hitting the bottle. My name is Terrence Terry Jr. I'm from Hopewell, Virginia. I was four years old when my dad went to prison, man. I've seen my mom working two or three jobs, hustling every day for nights, bro. You know, there's no heat. I had to take showers at school, I brushed my teeth at school, man. And there was times, man, that we didn't have no lights, you know, no water. You know, my mom was tired working all these jobs. I ain't got to feed kids. I'm the oldest, you know, it was like, you know, two or three others at a time growing up. So I had to grow up fast, bro. Me and my dad would write letters to each other, stuff like that. But I had to be the man of the house. And as I got older from like ages, you know, four to 10, to, you know, early teens, man, I, I, I felt like a man, man. I really did. I really did feel like a man. My grandma was taking me to church, so that was my foundation. Some days I was hopeful. Some days I was sad. And all the pain I went through, instead of being in other stuff, I just put on the football field. Football saved my life. All my friends were getting in trouble, smoking weed at a young age. But for me, I was, you know, going to class, studying, homework. I really was serious. When my dad came home out of prison, I was age 14, 15. I was happy. I was really happy, man. We was really close. You know, we was hanging out, uh, working out too. We was going to the gym together. I remember that. That was very cool. And he came to my games. It was a lot of motivation. I was really happy he was home. It was taking his anger out on us. Not just me, but everybody. And every day, man, it was it was like hell. I loved my senior year in high school, you know? I had a great time. It was the toughest years of my life. It really was. Me and my father got in a couple fist fights, you know? Uh, the most intense one, man, my lip was busted, you know what I'm saying? He, uh, you know, get into a fight, I go outside, kick me off the porch. Like, that changed me completely. My old dad kicked me off the porch. I went and fell on the ground, all that. I was crushed. Like, I looked at him like a superhero, like real talk. Like, you my bro, you, what you doing to me, man? Why, why, like why, you know? I couldn't go back in there. Going into the summertime, you know, it was time for me to, you know, get ready for college football but I wasn't prepared mentally for the stuff I went through with my father because the only reason why I did all this football was for him. My first year of college experience, you know, first semester was cool, but second semester was tough, you know? But I, I ended up on a team, uh, the coaches was on me, like they were showing me that tough love. And it was some nights I wanted to text my dad, but I didn't want to, I just threw my phone at the wall. Like, man, why I'm only here because of you, man. Like that unforgiveness, man, it was hard to let go of that. And it, 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 struggled. it, it, it messed me up, man. So the, the coaches ended up, you know, they kicked me off the team. Everything was happening so fast. My life changed just like that. Here I come, you know, high school football star to basically feel like a nobody. And all my fans and family back at home, you know, they call, they like, yo, when the game coming? I had to hide from a whole town, you know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't hate God, but sometimes I wanted to deal with God. Sometimes I didn't want to deal with God. I'm like, yo, why, what, what's going on? Why am I going through this? What I got to do to get out of this? Like, come on, man. And I ended up getting this job at the YMCA and ended up meeting this pastor. His name was Pastor Zach. There was nobody in the gym. I think it was like a Sunday evening. I'm in the gym, man. I see him shooting the basketball. He just hitting them buckets. I prayed before I met Pastor Zach that same evening. I was like, Lord, can you uh, make a way for me to find a church? Because I, I really, I was trying to get back to God, you know, because I didn't all this hate and evil in my heart and going through my mind, I didn't want that for real. I know who I am. I was like, I did it, God. God is good, man. We even said a prayer right there, man. I remember that, man. Ended up exchanging numbers. Following Sunday, you know, I visited the church for the first time. And I love all uh, racial people, but I was the only black man in there. And for the first time in my life, I was like, oh, snap. This is different. But you know what I did? I went up to the front and sat up there with Pastor Zach. Uh, the other pastor, his name was Pastor Terry. My name's Terry too, so we got in, we got in good uh, relationship. I was like, okay, God, God was working, man. 
So I was feeling like myself a little bit more. God was doing the work in my heart. He was changing me. And I was able to uh, serve at that church. And uh, I was part of a youth group there, helping, talking to all the teenagers, man. Pastor Zach took me in. He took me in, welcomed me in. He treated me like a family, like a brother. Like I didn't felt, you know, nothing. Like I saw him be a great husband, father his children, you know? And even though I was going through the opposite, you know, being around that, 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 that made, that inspired me. Like we literally was doing Bible studies and eating pizza every, every week. We'll meet once a week and then we'll go to church, you know? Like that changed my heart, man. I needed that church, I needed Pastor Zach and I needed these Bible studies. It has an impact on me while I stay in the Word today. The process to, to, to get to where I am now because of unforgiveness towards my dad, it was a slow process, it really was. What I want people to know about Jesus through my story is that he is faithful and that he has plans and that throughout this whole journey I've been on, God has brought me to great places. I've met so many great people, man, friends, opportunities. I've missed a lot, I've messed up a lot, but I also had a lot too that I've, you know, gained. I've been down. Such an encouraging story. God is faithful. Hear that word from Terrence today. Terrence said, what I want people to know about Jesus is that he is faithful. Even when we are faithless, and let's be honest, we all have those moments in life where we're questioning God. We're like, God, why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? I've done it. And I'm sure many people who are watching right now, you might be feeling that way. And I'm here to tell you that number one, it's okay. It's okay to have those feelings. And number two, I just wanna encourage you, it's okay to go to God with that. Terrence went to God, he was honest with the Lord. He said, God, why is this happening to me? Why did my father abuse me? My father put my own flesh and blood, put me in this situation, why is this happening? When you're honest with God, that is when God can really come in and do a work that only he can do. You saw it in Terrence's life. He asked the Lord, he said, Lord, can I please find a church? Can I please reconnect with you and people who are loving and caring and kind? He was honest with the Lord and God hears your prayers. He especially will answer you when you're just honest with him and you open up to him. And it was that same night that Terrence met Pastor Zach and that relationship just began to grow. And from there, as Terrence began to just surrender his life to the Lord and really follow after God, really began to just live intimately with Jesus, God brought more people into his life friends and family. The word of God says that God is a father to the fatherless and he puts people in family because God knows how important family is. And sometimes family isn't even flesh and blood. Sometimes family is brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God, sons and daughters, spiritual mothers and spiritual fathers. So if you're watching this today and you're just feeling lost, you're just questioning God, God, why don't I have people in my life who are supportive, who are kind and loving? If you want to be put in a family of brothers and sisters who know God and who love you and who look at you with the eyes of love, the love of God, pray with me right now to just ask God to bring those people into your life. Lord Jesus, I just cry out to you, God, Lord, I'm being honest with you and I open up to you and I just say that I'm lonely and I wanna be put into a family, God. My own flesh and blood have forsaken me, but I believe and declare that you have not forsaken me and you never will. So God, I pray that you plant me in a community of faith. I ask that you plant me surrounded by people who love me and who love you, Jesus. I pray and ask this in your holy and precious name, Jesus. Amen. 
and amen. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer with me, you need more prayer for anything at all, please just give us a call. It's really easy, 1-800-700-7000. Well, we leave you guys with words from 1 Peter 3, 8. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.